Hey folks, so I got a uh, another Game Boy Advance SP backlight kit here. This is very similar, in fact it's the exact same backlight kit as that uh, previous Cloud Game Store one that I did on the SP. Uh, they'd sent me that pre-production one that I tried out, then they sent me the retail version, and then this is the exact same thing except this time we have a fancy laminated display to go with it. Uh, so for those that aren't aware, um, the laminated display means that the uh, lens glass, which in this case it is glass, is adhered directly to the LCD with no air gap or anything. You can, well that's glass, but yeah. Uh, I like, I like laminated displays. They look pretty good. Um, I also like that Cloud Game Store is shipping their kits with some cool lens colors and not just like the standard black or even white or the Famicom, but you know, we can get this cool mirror finish. Uh, I wanted to install this in a black SP. I think that would look pretty, pretty sweet, but I didn't have any handy that were clean. Uh, anyway, you don't get a whole lot with the kit. You don't need a whole lot, but you get the LCD itself the adapter, PCB, and then the uh, ribbon cable here. Um, sorry, I started explaining this and then I got totally sidetracked. Lamination. So the lens itself is attached directly to the LCD. There is no gap between the lens and the LCD uh, as opposed to traditional Game Boy... Um, good lord, I don't even have one handy. There we go, this will do. Uh, as opposed to traditional Game Boy construction where there's the uh, screen lens, there's a layer of air, and then the LCD itself. Um, the primary benefit to having the screen laminated to the uh, lens is that it reduces the gap between the lens and the screen. Um, it, it's gonna eliminate parallax for the most part depending on how thick the lamination is. Um, more often than not, it, oh, it's parallel. Anyway, um, you get better light transfer, so that should result in a brighter image. Uh, it looks just absolutely phenomenal, especially side by side. Um, you can't get dust in between the lens and the screen. It, trust me, when the option is available, I think lamination is the best option. Um, there are some downsides, of course. Uh, Nintendo opted to use air gap displays instead of laminated ones, and they're even still doing it in 2021 with their Nintendo Switches. These, these things are air gapped. Um, but the reason, they, the reason they chose to air gap is, to, well, there's two reasons. Uh, the primary reason is that it increases durability. If the screen itself is right up against the lens, anything that hits the lens is going to hit the screen too. Uh, if there's an air gap and you know you say you drop this as kids are prone to do with their toys, um, it has a better chance of surviving. That's also the same reason they went with plastic lenses instead of glass. It uh, it's more durable than glass. Plastic, it just is. You drop your plastic lens, you know, it might scratch, but it's not going to shatter. Um, and most of all, because of price. Lamination is one extra step, costs money. Glass is also more expensive than plastic. But it, it's, it's not without its trade-offs. It is cheaper, yes, but it is also more durable, and I think that is the key factor in the long run. Uh, I did actually do a full write-up on lamination in my backlight wiki that I will have linked in the description, but this this is basically the TLDR of that. Um, one more note on laminate. No, totally forgot. It's gone. Read the, uh, read the wiki if you want to know more. Anyway, let's move on. So this is what you get. Let's take a look at our donor here. We have this wonderful mint condition Game Boy Advance SP. You might notice it has a small scratch on the display, but I think I think we'll be okay because we can just replace that display and um, we'll be good. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this bad boy torn apart. Because I'm using that mirror screen, I would have preferred a uh, black Game Boy, like I said, but 
Also, like I said, I don't have any available that are uh, ready for install, so we'll just work with what I got, and what I got is this gel. So it's the same deal as usual. We're just gonna go ahead and get this torn apart. Doesn't matter if you're reshelling or not, no matter what, you have to pull your Game Boy apart. If you wanna install a kit like this. Six tri-point screws, and then the bottom should come right off. A special attention to things that could fall out of the bottom such as the power switch the battery cover square nut and the shoulder button hinge pins um, usually all of these except maybe the power switch will stay on the back but not all of them do and Flip that up. I am going to unlatch this LCD bail here so I can slip the ribbon cable out. In this particular case, I am not at all worried about being delicate with that, but it's always nice to save parts. I'm going to drop all the buttons and such back in. And then from here, we can go and start assembling in the new shell. But first, let's do some tests. I'm going to go grab a working screen so I don't have to bother extracting this. And because it's broken anyway, it won't be too good for testing. Ta-da! Like I said, it helps to keep parts around just in case you need them. No sense destroying things just because you don't need it right now. All right, so normally we would just test the new kit and go from there, but I am going to get a baseline power usage measurement so that we can judge the uh, power usage of the kit in terms of, um, we'll see how much power it uses and judge how much battery life we can expect out of the new kit. I should have also grabbed the game I usually test with. Let me go find that. All right, so I'm testing with the exact same cart that I always test with. It is my OEM legitimate Pokemon Ruby that I keep thrown around. And by Ruby, I mean Emerald. Uh, I am fully aware how much these carts are going for. <laughs> and yes, it is painful. Anyway, I'm going to use my power supply here because people keep asking me. This is a Miniware MDP XP. It is not very cheap, but it is very good. Good lord, why are none of these marked? I always wanna double check. I don't wanna get a reverse polarity because that would be bad. Okay. I'm going to set my power supply to 3.7 volts. I'm pretty sure that's what I always test out, at least for an SP. And as you can see, the front light is on. It's just an AGS-001 screen. And in the overworld of Pokemon Emerald, don't know how well you can see that down there, but it is pulling at 3.7 volts, anywhere from 57 milliamps to, I think I saw 49. 
Very steady, close. Oh, yeah, 49 to 59. So basically all of nothing. Let us try the new screen here. Now these connectors, these are called zero insertion force connectors or ZIF connectors. The idea is you lift the bale up, slide in the ribbon. It must, it, it goes in pretty deep and then you can push the bale down. In this particular case, it should hide that white line on the ribbon. And then this goes in the exact same way. Fairly certain it goes pins down. And I'm gonna set that down. Ta da! So on the default brightness, and we'll explore later the different brightness levels and power usage of those brightness levels and even if it retains those brightness levels, so on and so forth. Default brightness level without doing any soldering, we are at 109 to, I think I saw, oh no, 112 to 97 milliamps at the same voltage. So about twice as much power, which if we extrapolate means about half as much battery life. Um, not terrible, but you know, it, it, it is a trade off for a better looking screen. It's also brighter, easier to see, so on and so forth. But now that we know that works, now that we have that tested, let's go ahead and get it installed. So normally you'd continue tearing this down because we want to pull the screen out of there, but like I said, I'm reshelling, so I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to leave this screen in there. I've done plenty of SP teardowns on basically every other backlight kit. Uh, so if you want to, if you genuinely never torn down an SP and you don't know how to do that, go ahead and check out one of my other videos. Um, I try and show the whole process, but in this particular case, I'm going to be reshelling. So. We don't need anything else out of here aside from the speaker and probably the light pipe and maybe, I think I'm gonna need some of the screws. Um, yeah, here's where it gets a little bit awkward because I have used this shell before. It already has hinges installed. Uh, so again, normally the, this is pretty atypical, but I haven't mostly prepared. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. You know what? I'm going to show it anyway. What the hell? Just so we have one complete video reference. Pop the speaker out. There should be a little speaker grill. Sometimes it stays in the case. A lot of the time it stays in the case. You should keep that with the speaker. It protects the speaker from getting junk in there. All right. So we need to pull out this long crosshead screw to pull off the hinge cover. And then we need to get into the top. And my preferred way of doing that is using a plastic spudger slip that in here and usually we can walk it around and 
usually get it under and lift it up in one piece. Sometimes the adhesive doesn't come with it, and it did not in this particular case, which is going to make reinstalling these difficult, but... It's not too terrible to work around. Generally don't want to use a metal tool because you'll scuff up the uh, plastic shell or these little covers. I'm already doing a bang up job and I think I, think I left that mark there. It's probably hard to see. Anyway. Ooh, I ripped that one. Boom. And now I don't have to go find screws. So yeah, there's the adhesive that usually comes off, but didn't. All right, so getting the hinges out, I actually have a tool for this. Um, gee, it sure would be nice if you could buy that tool, wouldn't it? Uh, currently only available if you have a 3D printer. But if you have a 3D printer, you can go ahead and print out one of these bad boys. And this makes getting the hinges out real easy. You just pop that in there, give it a little push. Sometimes they're pretty tight. Hang on. And sometimes the tool doesn't print right. I want this one. My old printer printed these way better than my new printer does. Same filament. Yeah, like I said, sometimes they're a lot easier than other times. There we go. It helps to have it lined up properly. If you use this tool to pop the hinges, Breaking them is extremely unlikely. They're still pretty delicate, though. Uh, it's also really, really pain in the butt, regardless of the tool. You can also just jam like a ballpoint pen in there. A lot of people do that. Um, sometimes you break the clips off the hinge, though. Oh, I ruined my tool. Oh no. Let me try the other one again. like it printed perfectly. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so once you have those popped, open it up and then you can slide them all the way out. Take note of left and right, they are directional. In my experience, left hinges have the black clips, right hinges have the white clips. 
but there are some exceptions. Um, and then you just go ahead and pop those in your new shell, but my new shell already has hinges. Anyway, moving on. This goes in here. We will go ahead and fold that down. Give this a little twisty twist. Notice this version of the kit no longer has touch sensors, which quite frankly, I am very pleased to see because the touch sensors sucked. I've never liked the touch sensors. It's a good alternative if you have no other choice, but it's not a good primary method. Okay, now let's discuss the trim. This is a stock top, and it does go on there without trimming. I don't know why they keep going back and forth on requires trim, doesn't require trim, requires trim. Uh, when this kit was originally announced and when I did the um, the uh, engineering sample, that one didn't require trimming. And then when I did the release model, that one did require trimming. And now apparently with this one, you don't need to do any trimming again. My shell is already trimmed. I recommend trimming them anyway. Just to guarantee that you have no fitment issues, but it goes together pretty easily. There you go. Go ahead and pop some screws in. Yeah, so sum up, it will work if you don't want to trim, but I'd recommend trimming anyway. Because it's literally the same screen. Oops, a doodle. The placement is basically the same. It was close enough with the old version that you could have gotten away with not trimming if you wanted to, but didn't really recommend it. I don't quite understand what changed. Or maybe just the fact that it's laminated, it puts the screen a little bit closer to the lens, and that much extra room means you can get away with not trimming. Who knows? Pick an adhesive out of the screw. Because someone insisted on reusing screws and not picking all the adhesive out before jamming a screwdriver in. Anywho. slightly misbehaving, but I think we can work around that. Once we get the cover on, it should hold its ground. All right, cool. Now time for the fun part. Uh, soldering is not required, but you get no brightness control if you don't solder. So we're gonna be doing some soldering. My kit did not come with wire. I really don't think they normally do, but uh, if, you're, if you already own a soldering iron, chances are pretty good you have some wire somewhere laying around, uh, especially if you've already done one of these kits.
Hmm. Hmm. That'll do. Alright, so we want to solder to I uh, thought it was that bottom pad there. Let's double check. So that is ground. Yep. Nope, top pad. All right, so we want to solder to this top pad there. There's this group of two test pads. We want to solder to the one labeled Q12B right on top. The soldering iron's tangled. I don't have as much slack as I usually do. I'm going to solder this to the ribbon first. Open this up for a little bit extra slack. Pull that out. Slide that in. Slide the bale closed. I'm going to try and reposition this so I can manipulate the Jesus thing, but I don't think that's happening. I want to set this down just like that. Hey! Missing a Game Boy. There it is. Ah, oh, it's slightly too tall. There we go. Two and a half GBA SPs. Alright, so I'm going to route that over top and then down. Bring it right there. Check this beforehand. Yeah. That is a terrible way to remove insulation, but I mean, I guess it does work. And that's it. We're good to go to slam this back together. I'm going to use the black buttons that I had in that little baggie. Well, shoot, I thought I had black buttons in that little baggie. There's an extra D-pad somewhere. There it is. Strange how that works. I 
I need to leave that open for the extra slack. So my shell already has a light pipe. I don't need to worry about that. I can drop it in. What the hell? There's no A or B either? How did I miss that? Good lord. Start or select. But I have an extra brightness button, because of course I do. Actually, I think I just realized what that extra brightness button is from, and that actually makes perfect sense. Uh, where is my speaker? There it is. I like to use the original membranes whenever possible. They usually feel heaps better than the uh, aftermarket ones. Usually, not always. Cool, cool, cool. Three short screws in the motherboard, not long, short. It's a fantastic way to ruin your shell by trying to thread some long screws in there. Otherwise you get a dot there, there, and there. The springs are directional. There is a left and a right for the shoulder buttons. So if you're reshelling, do one at a time. Make your life easier. Transfer over the uh, square nut if you need it. Of course, there's an extra power switch. Why wouldn't there be? And then the bottom goes on. Like that, make sure both power switches are either set to on or off. I prefer off, but really doesn't matter as long as they're the same. Short screw in the cart slot area. Long screw in the four corners. Short screw again. 
battery compartment. And there you go. Bob Giganti. Cool. So now we need battery and to test this. Uh, I am going to use, yeah, I'll use that one. By the way, people often say that these screws on the Game Boy Advance SP are Phillips. They're not. They're JIS. I, I think this should be proof enough that they're JIS. Look at that. You can see on the bit it says J00, not PH, but J. And you see how nicely it sticks in there. And there you go. Bring the camera back up. I forgot it was down that low still. Just doing a quick test. I don't see any of the uh, frame dropping or uh, screen tearing that we saw on some of the earlier kits. Um, thankfully, that uh, that doesn't seem to be a recurring issue. Um, Kit makers got the uh, got it taken care of. Cool, cool. Uh, oh, let's. I guess let's run some actual tests. I need a flash cart. Show me a flash cart. There's a flash cart. All right, so sil turns out silver on silver actually works. <laughs> I still think silver on black would have been nice, but this is pretty good. Um, I can't really calibrate this. Let's. For context, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S10e for filming. I know those have their own uh, biases towards warmer colors. What the heck am I looking for? I'm looking for... Overscan, is that it? No. I should walk through all of them again. That one. The grid test. I wanted to see, make sure we're getting the whole screen, and indeed we are. There's no cutoff on that. Uh, but anyway, my Samsung phone tends to veer on the warm side of color accuracy. I have no way of calibrating it. I also have no interest in calibrating it, uh, and I'm not doing anything in post, but... Just for context, we will compare with a funny playing kit. And let's go with the gradient color bars. Kill some of these lights, bring that in a little bit. And you tell me which one has the better color representation. They are, the angle's the same on both. Brightness is probably not the same, but it's pretty darn close. You can see, if nothing else, the viewing angles on the Funny Playing are better. Though, for context, Funny Playing is not using the same screen anymore. They're using, um, this is one of the 9380 kits. This is also fully laminated for context, but this is using an older LG screen. They are now shipping Topoly, which is lower quality and has some of its own color reproduction problems. But 
I don't know, to be honest, they both look pretty good, but these screens tend to uh, veer towards the cool side. You can tell just from the background that they are sending two different colors. There is a different color test compare between the two. If we look all the way in the top left where white is and blue on this screen, they look pretty darn similar. In person, I can see that that is very obviously white and that is very obviously blue. But on the funny playing screen, it does look a lot better both in person and on camera as far as whites go. But, I don't know, you be, you be the judge, you tell me which one you like more, because that's ultimately what it's up to. Here's one thing that I haven't actually noticed before now, but if we look at the grays, I'm trying to get these both in my hand, on this screen on the Cloud Game Store, we can actually see grays a little bit more clearly than we can on the funny playing screen. So I guess it depends on which type of games you're playing, but... I don't know. It, here's the thing. They're both heaps better than the original screen, uh, especially if your screen looks like this. So both of them, as far as I'm concerned, they are an absolute clear upgrade over stock. Um, oh, one more thing I suppose is worth mention mentioning. This screen is smaller than this one. So if you were to look, if you were to compare the sizes of the LCD itself, let us use a ruler. I'm gonna line that up on the left and put my finger on the right. Try not to move it. And then we're gonna look at the funny playing. And actually, I should have done the other way around. Let's do it the other way around. I'm gonna mark that off. And put that down there. You can see you do get a little bit extra screen. Not a lot but it is there in case you're looking at these going, hey, that one looks a little bit bigger. Yes, it is bigger. Um, more color tests. You can see, at least on my screen, that one looks real blue. Here's an interesting test. If you look at the bottom right again, the pink on blue contrast on this one looks a lot better than the contrast on the funny playing. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it's what I'm seeing. Linearity, both are good. Those are circles. They should be nice and round. They are indeed round. I'm not seeing anything too special. Uh, I don't care about any of that. Da, 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 no. Yeah, I didn't see any issues with that either. This is an interesting test to see if your screen is using um, linear scaling, which it is. I already knew that. Um, both of these are. You should see solid black, solid white, solid black, solid white. If your screen is not using proper scaling, then you're just going to see a gray screen and not um, solid black and solid white. So now, because I always do this, let me grab another copy of Emerald, pop that in there. I suppose I could have used my flash carts, but I have the two copies of emeralds, so we'll go that route. Go to the same place on both of these. And we can compare the colors in a game. Now, again, I want to be explicitly clear. This is not bad. 
I just think when I put these two side by side, this one looks better. You can tell, I can tell in person that the color reproduction is not the same, and I think that the contrast and uh, tendency towards warmer colors on the funny playing screen does look better, uh, especially in the game that I spend most of my time playing on these consoles. Again, this new screen is not bad at all. I just think this is better. That is what it is. Wait, these are the exact same game. They should have the exact same colors. There you go. All right. I'm going to put that away. Now we are going to look at the brightness which you can see steps through. It starts at the brightest. We have one, two, three, four, five, six levels of brightness. And let's see if it holds that after a reboot. It does not. So you get maximum brightness out of the box, it appears. Actually, let's double check that. Yeah, you get max brightness out of the box. Um, can't really, can't really get more brightness out of it. There's no secret brightness level like the uh, Funny Playing Kit has. So if you want a brighter screen, Funny Playing is the way to go. Okay, these are both on max max brightness. Uh, this kit actually has a, ooh, there we go, an even higher brightness level. As you can see by my uh, battery indicator going red almost immediately, it's a big drain on power, but there we go. I don't know. It, if you want brightness, that is, again, Funny playing is the way to go. But that being said, I'm not, I'm genuinely not trying to like say, ooh, this kit bad, this kit bad. I'm pretty sure this kit is still cheaper than the funny playing kit. Um, and it does genuinely look good. The lamination looks phenomenal. Uh, the lens, the printing on the lens, mint, all right? Uh, this lens is from the Cloud Game Store vendor, I guess. And the one thing, like it, they make better than anything else. The one thing they make better than anyone else is screen lenses. The screen lenses that that seller is putting out are just phenomenal. They are the best that you can get, in my opinion, um, for every console. And they're making the screen lenses that are being laminated to these kits. Now, I have been very vocal about Funny Playing's screen lenses. I have liked these, but side by side, you know, if you're looking for an original style logo, you're not going to find a better looking one than Cloud Game Store. Yeah, the font, especially on that SP, is not perfect. It's a really hard font to get right. I don't know what the heck Nintendo did, but the print quality itself is phenomenal, especially compared to a lot of the other generic aftermarket lenses. Uh, so I am very pleased with this. I think it is a very, very good kit for the money. Um, but like I was trying to mention with some of the trade-offs, if absolute screen quality is what you're after, I think the Funny Playing Kit's the way to go, but this is still an excellent option. Um, I don't think I have too much else to say. I think I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this kit my way to check out. i um, going to go ahead and apologize to Retro Game Repair Shop directly because they sent this to me at least a month ago and I've been uh, sitting on it and by the time I get this video uploaded it's probably going to be closer to two months. Um, I, I 
deeply apologize. And uh, but you know they're they're really cool for sending me these kits to play with, and you know it's 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 been great. Um, I do have an affiliate link set up with them, but the link I will share in the description is not that. If you want to use my affiliate link to help me out, uh, go to my YouTube channel, click the About tab, it's in there. Uh, otherwise, you can use the code MAKO at checkout, M-A-K-H-O, not the way Voltar spells it, but the way I spell it. And that gets you 10% off and that gives me a kickback. Uh, if you want to use that, you know, it, it, it helps all of us out at the, the way I see it. So um, if you don't want to use that, that's your prerogative too. But anyway, like I said, there will be a link in the description to this kit. Uh, it won't be an affiliate link, but if you want to use my affiliate link, you know where to find it. Um, oh, real quick. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get out of here, but let's look at one more thing. I totally forgot. The reason I didn't put the kit into this Game Boy is because I wanted to put these two kits side by side. So this is the retail version of the kit. Uh, the reason I wanted to show this off is this uses uh, an OEM lens. So yeah, I guess you can argue that the print quality on the OEM lens is the best, but this screen, it appears, is still slightly, slightly larger than stock. Ooh, I hope that boots into what I think it does. Yeah. But if we take a look at the grid, you can see I have a little bit cut off depending on the angle I'm holding this at. Whereas the laminated version doesn't seem to have that problem, as I showed earlier, because it has a custom lens. <laughs> yeah, also I didn't get the alignment spot on. It's close, but no no perfect amount of centering would have fixed getting cut off on one of the two sides. So yeah, that is one of the nice things about the new kit. Also, it's laminated. This one can get dust under it. Mine hasn't so far, but you know, I've only had it a few months and I quite frankly haven't used it too much, but you know how it is. Anyway, um, of these two kits, the laminated one is without a doubt the way to go. Don't even bother with the unlaminated one. Um, if you have a choice. Um, well, okay. No, I suppose there could be an exception. If you want like to get a custom printed lens, then obviously you'd have to go with the unlaminated one. But barring a custom printed lens, I think the laminated one is the way to go. Anyway, links in the description. Check it out if you want to. I will also update my spreadsheet with power usage and brightness numbers. I suspect it will be pretty much the same as this kit, but I'll add a separate line anyway, just in case there are any differences. I suspect we might get slightly more brightness out of this one um, because the screen itself is laminated directly to glass, which should give us a little bit better light transmission than the old dirty plastic lens with the air gap. But power usage, again, should be pretty much the same because they are the same kit, just with a different screen. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day, and I'll uh, catch you next time.